Paragus's bouncing baby boy is back, and he's still bloody terrifying. Do it, Broly! <laughs> I'm Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 biggest changes in Dragon Ball Super Broly. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. With the release of this awesome new Dragon Ball film, the original has been totally retconned, though it likely was never canon to begin with. But now, Broly has finally found himself firmly placed in the Dragon Ball mythos, albeit with a few major changes which we'll be looking at closely in this list. He's getting stronger! <laughs> Number 10, Timeline Placement. Alright, this one goes without saying, but we have to get it out the way. The events of Dragon Ball Super Broly do not occur in a similar position on the timeline as they did in the original. At long last, we found you, Prince Vegeta. Being a direct sequel to the Tournament of Power arc, this obviously means that the fated meeting of the Z Fighters and Broly happens much, much later. In age 780, according to Toriyama himself. But this isn't all. Broly's birth is also replaced on the timeline, to the age 732, the exact same year as Prince Vegeta. Hi boy, you bring honor to our name. Not only does this mean that the father and son spent a much longer time in exile, but it also increases Broly's ranking on the power level scale dramatically, since he is now on par with the likes of Super Saiyan God Blue forms. How's that for a buff? Have you ever seen a Saiyan? Before. Number 9, Goku no longer left Earth as a baby. This one may raise a couple of eyebrows since we're all too familiar with that classic image of Goku landing on Earth in his Saiyan pod naked as the day he was born. He found a baby boy with a tail sealed inside a little round pod. However, the events of DB Super Brawly follow the manga The Departure of the Fated Child found within Jacko's origin story, wherein a very young Goku clad in Saiyan armor is shipped to Earth before planet Vegeta is destroyed, noticeably at an older age than a baby. You do what it takes to survive, son. Interestingly enough, the movie also confirms that Goku wasn't sent to Earth to conquer it, but rather because it was a peaceful planet with low power leveled inhabitants. Number 8, Brawly doesn't kill Paragus. Paragus, Paragus, Paragus. You just can't catch a break, can you, bud? It seems that even in a rebooted telling of their story, he simply cannot escape the jaws of death. But this time, there's a lot less patricide going on. Crushed by your own son who once saved your life! We all remember that iconic scene of the Saiyan survivor trying to escape the oncoming meteor, only to be crushed within the pod by his own flesh and blood. But this time around, it's Freezer himself adding another Saiyan to his long list of kills. <laughs> Hello, he does so in order to fuel Broly's rage, suggesting that new Broly, despite being treated like dirt by his old man, has a lot more affection towards his father. One thing's for sure though, Paragus is still the same scumbag he used to be, but maybe with slightly more justifiable motives this time around. Number 7, Bardock's Origin Story. Another big origin story we were surprised to see make an inclusion was that of Goku's father Bardock. Only an average power level. I thought you were special. While in the original, Bardock has a premonition of Frieza's eradication of the Saiyans as a result of the mystic powers he's forced to obtain from the Kanasans, things are much simpler in this retelling. Instead, Bardock is presented as someone who is skeptical of the alien tyrant and tends to his partner, Goku's mother, Gine, to hatch a plan to evacuate their son from the planet safely. Side note, he also doesn't have his badass bandana. You're right, I should have been there. Fortunately, Bardock has the same awesome send off, dying in a valiant attempt to fend off Freezer's planet busting supernova. But since he can no longer see into the future, this sadly means he never sees the vision of his son defeating Freezer. 
Number 6. Vegeta actually puts up a fight If there's one gripe Vegeta stands have with the original Broly movie, it's that they did their boy dirty. He'll kill all of us! When he bears witness to Broly's power, Vegeta uncharacteristically succumbs to his immense fear of the legend, and it leads him to have a complete mental collapse for about 80% of the movie. You think you're doing? Why don't you stop whining like a baby and fight like a man? This time around, Vegeta is an absolute beast, taking the fight to the absurdly powerful foe without flinching once, and even getting the better of him for a good part of their contest. There is still a pretty long period of time where Vegeta is stood there doing nothing, though. Oh, you big old softy. Hey! I'm not soft! <laughs> Number 5. The Source of Broly's Power There's little to no explanation to Broly's absurd strength in the original movie other than him being the legendary Super Saiyan. <laughs> Now, him holding that moniker may still be the case with this new film, but there are other key factors that contribute to his power level. When discussing Broly's lack of a tail, Paragus says it was removed to avoid him turning into his great ape form as it was far too destructive. Somehow, this has led to Broly being able to gain the strength of his great ape form while maintaining his regular body composition after powering up to a certain degree, giving some insight as to how anyone else in Universe 7 could possibly be on par with Goku and Vegeta. Number 4. Broly's Hatred <laughs> Broly's power has always been linked with his unbridled anger too, and who could forget who triggered that anger more than anything else? Goku. And why? Well, because… They were born on the same day. Yes, Goku's crying as a baby drove the legendary Super Saiyan to insanity, but this time around, they weren't born on the same day. This means that Broly didn't even know Kakarot existed and therefore didn't have any crybaby PTSD. In fact, despite his rage-fueled fighting style, there seems to be little hatred in Broly's heart at all in the newest movie, but more on that later. <laughs> Number 3. A New Beginning for Gogeta We are Gogeta While the 90s movies are always considered non-canon, this now cements that Goku and Vegeta had never tried this method of fusion prior to Dragon Ball Super Broly. This is illustrated by A. How they have to learn the technique for the first time, and B. How they come up with the name Gogeta on the spot. One thing that remained the same though? Vegeta's absolute embarrassment towards the goofy dance. You're insane! I'm not posing like that! With this new technique in their arsenal, the two will no longer have to rely on the Patara earrings and their Vegito form in future fights. And all it took was Freezer getting the absolute sh kicked out of him for over an hour. Number 2. Broly's Fate in a surprising turn of events, this time around our boy Broly wasn't gut punched into a thousand pieces or blasted into the sun. <laughs> Broly survives the conflict with Gogeta by being teleported away from a potentially fatal Kamehameha thanks to Chilai and Lemo's wish to Shenron. The Dragon Ball's power sends him back to Planet Vampa to live out his days in peace. Well, at least until Goku drops in to say hi. That fight was amazing! That's right, Broly is no longer a monster of the week, and instead an active member of the Dragon Ball cast. And hey, he even got a hot green girlfriend for his troubles! Number 1. Broly is a much more sympathetic character By far the biggest change in Broly's new incarnation is Broly himself. He's He's pure evil! We spoke earlier about his hatred for Goku in the original, turning him into a beast of pure evil. Instead, this new Broly is more a victim of circumstance. Exiled to Planet Vampa and raised as a tool of revenge by his father Paragus, Broly spent his entire life struggling to survive in the nigh uninhabitable planet, never knowing simple luxuries such as drinkable water. Though he is well adept in it, Broly no longer enjoys fighting, much like Gohan. But most notable of all are his relationships with Chilai, Lemo, and his Vampa born friend, Ba. These show that he's a far more empathetic character this time around, and could, maybe, 
just maybe be a powerful ally to the Z Fighters someday. We had our fair share of enemies, trust me. But I don't think that you're one of them. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.